Hello, it's Scott Manley here. And today I want to talk about how the tiny amount of oblateness in the Earth's shape can have a profound effect on spacecraft and how, in fact, we can exploit this for good. If you consider a satellite orbiting a perfectly spherical planet, like in Kerbal Space Program, the force of the gravity of the planet is pulling in towards the centre all the time. But what happens in the case of the Earth where you've got a bit more mass in a band around the equator? Turns out that if you're close to the Earth, then the force vector from the gravity is no longer pointed exactly through the centre of the Earth. Depending upon your latitude, you will actually have the force pulling yourself slightly more towards the equator. This means that for a satellite orbiting the Earth, when the satellite moves north of the equator, it feels a small extra force pulling it south, and when it moves south of the equator, it feels a small force pulling it north. Now, over each half revolution, you end up with a force that's essentially applied at right angles to the orbit. And we all know from our Kerbal Space Program that when you apply a thrust at right angles to your orbit, that you change the inclination. Actually, more specifically, you change the plane of the orbit. Now, standard Kerbal Space Program only models perfectly spherical gravity fields. If you want to get the oblate gravity field of the Earth, then you need a mod. And that mod is, of course, Real Solar System and the Principia mod. So here we have an example object in a 45 degree inclination orbit. And sure enough, if you look, you can actually see the predictions of the orbit. So the predictions are the purple, and the previous orbit is kind of green. And as you can see, every orbit makes it rotate around, brings it further and further around. This is measured, of course, relative to the static background stars. The Earth is obviously rotating underneath this, but the orbit is itself slowly orbiting around the Earth. It's precessing is the technical term. Indeed, another way to think about this is a gyroscope spinning and precessing under the force of gravity. If uh, the rotation axis is at an angle to gravity, then gravity wants to pull the whole thing across, but the angular momentum of the gyroscope resists this and instead causes the thing to precess until, of course, it slows down and runs out of energy. Now, if I flip the direction of rotation and instead put it on a 135 degree inclination orbit, that is essentially a retrograde orbit at 45 degrees to the equator, then you'll notice that the direction of the precession is now going in the opposite direction. It's actually moving in the same direction as the rotation of the Earth. So orbits that are exactly zero degrees and 90 degrees inclination do not precess. But in between, the rate at which the orbit will precess depends upon its inclination. So this shows two satellites, one on a 45 degree orbit, the other on a 60 degree orbit. If we run this quickly forwards, then you will start to see clues that one is moving faster than the other. These two satellites essentially started out in the same orbit, same altitude. The only thing that was different was their inclination. And you see that one is getting pulled around faster than the Earth. The other, the extra mass at the Earth's equator, is slowly causing these orbits to you know, rotate around the center. The important number here is the longitude of the AN, the ascending node, that is slowly decreasing in this state, uh, case. So the question is, can satellite designers exploit this behavior for good? And I'm sure many of you have already guessed that the answer is the sun synchronous orbit. As the Earth's orbit carries it around the sun, the sun's position relative to the satellites changes by just under one degree every day. But if the mission requires that the angle of the sun remains roughly constant, then what you can do is put the spacecraft into an orbit with a correct inclination so that the precession rate matches the orbit rate of the Earth around the sun. Now you can calculate the precession rate per orbit using, uh, of course, the mass of the Earth, the inclination of the satellite, the altitude of the orbit, and an obscure parameter called J2. The gravitational potential of the Earth is modeled by a summation of spherical harmonics, and the J2 parameter is the first and strongest parameter in that list. 
The idea is that by adding higher and higher degrees of harmonics, you can eventually reproduce the entire structure. Just like if you take sound, you can add higher and higher harmonics to more accurately reproduce the audio. This paper by Yoshidi Kozai from 1964 calculated all the harmonics of the Earth up to J14. But modern data such as the Earth Geopotential model of 2008 has thousands of parameters. But for our purposes we can just use J2 and if we require 360 degrees of rotation per year, substitute in the right numbers, what you get is uh, the cosine of I is equal to A divided by 12,352 kilometers to the you know, power 7 over 2. Now, because of the way the Earth and the Sun move, it actually has to be a retrograde orbit, but not very retrograde. For a semi-major axis of about 7,200 kilometers, then the ideal inclination is about 98.7 degrees. The closer the satellite is to the Earth, the stronger the force, so the inclination would get closer to 90. If you go further and further out, then the inclination has to get closer and closer to 180. And that 12,352 represents the upper limit, where the effects of the equatorial bulge are just too weak to actually keep up with the rotation of the Earth around the Sun. Many Earth observation satellites use these Sun synchronous orbits because it ensures that the Sun's illumination of the Earth's surface is consistent over multiple passes. It can also be used to ensure that the solar panels are getting power through most of the orbit, such as in this case where most of the orbit, the Sun is above the horizon. It only disappears at the top because, well, it's winter. And even at 800 kilometers up, that extra uh, inclination hides the satellite behind the Earth for just a small part of the orbit. Now, the oblateness of the Earth isn't the only thing acting on the orbit. You're also going to have things like solar radiation pressure, drag, and various other things. So the orbits will have to be maintained somehow. Or in some cases, it's possible to pick orbits where most of the effects cancel out and the orbit is essentially frozen in this good configuration for a long time. Anyway, yeah, that is the magic of the Sun Synchronous Orbit. You can't do it in regular Kerbal Space Program. You need the Principia mod and you need the realism overhaul. But of course, real satellites can use the stock version of Earth without any mods. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.